Folks, and welcome to another edition of the Bill Crane Report with my friend Dwayne Weiss. Uh, we are here to uh, give you a particular slant on the news of the day, the outrages of the day. We certainly have a lot of them in. We got plenty of stuff to get to, but before we begin our usual chaos, I thought that this week we reflect on the events of the same week in August in 1945, when on August 6th we dropped the first atomic bomb, Little Boy, on Hiroshima, killing 60 to 80,000 people. Take, take, pick any number. Uh, no one knows. No one knows. They'll never know. And on August 9, <clears throat> 1945, a second bomb, Fat Man, was dropped on Nagasaki with similar devastating results. The Japanese Emperor Hirohito put out the call for unconditional surrender. And on August 14th, we celebrated VJ Day, the end of World War, War II. II. We now wring our hands and debate whether we should have done this. We're not going to make a big thing out of this, but I think there's two or three pieces of information we really need to consider. Number one, running up to this August week, we fought the bloodiest battle of World War II, Okinawa. With U.S. dead numbering 12,287, the battle for Okinawa was fought from April 1st to June 22nd. We incurred 36,631 casualties. 239 U.S. men remain missing to this day. The Japanese suffered 94,000 deaths. Only 9,000 of uh, the Japanese surrendered and were right. prisoners. <clears throat> they would fight to the end. Okay, that is lesson number one. These people will fight to the end. Number two, a lesson that we need to take into consideration in dropping the atomic bomb General Curtis LeMay had begun a firebombing campaign mm -hmm. on the cities, killing tens of thousands of people. At a, drop. More, more people were died in the firebombing of Tokyo than, oh, yeah. than the atomic bombs. Absolutely. And, and, and <clears throat> this is a horrible, horrible way to die, to be incinerated. Um, and yet, LeMay had more plans. He was oh, going yeah. to dump more. That napalm was quite a weapon. It certainly was. So we have that. And third, the plans, now we didn't know this till afterwards. They knew this. I mean, Truman knew this and Stimson knew this. And our generals knew this. But consider this. The plans were on November 1st, Operation Olympic. 14 divisions landing in southern Japan. Yep. Imagine the casualties our boys would have suffered. Well, it was predicted to be a million. Yep. But then, March 1st, 1946, Operation Coronet, 24 divisions into the main island of Honshu. This war wasn't going to be over. Nope. Not in a, by a long stretch. And we were going to suffer tremendous casualties, and we were going to kill enormous amounts of Japanese. Yep. 
whether it was civilians, military, every prisoner of war they held of ours was going to be executed, executed. and we would be we would set up a blockade and we'd be starving the people to death. They were starting to train civilians. They had, didn't have much for weapons, so they were using sharpened bamboo sticks, yeah. and they were going to die to the last That's man. That's exactly the right. The war powers, the generals, said Japan will cease to exist before we surrender. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's, that was the mentality. So That, that was it. So um, we kind of take, take that into consideration, yep. that we were going to, not just us, face <laughs> tremendous casualties and an additional year, year and a half of war. Yep. Well, what a drain <clears throat> on our resources, our young men's lives, and but what a tremendous toll the Japanese would pay. Yeah. Well, just think of a million casualties for yeah. the Allies. Yeah. It would mostly be U.S. Exactly. A million casualties. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and even though the Russians entered the war, I think on August Eve, uh, it was phony. They that, weren't going to do anything. That was serendipitous on their part. They just wanted some they, islands. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so they weren't going to add no, they anything. They weren't adding anything. No. So it was going to be us. Yeah. And the Brits would help. My uncle was in that battle. Yeah. In the Navy. Yeah. He was on the USS Bunker Hill carrier. Okay. When the kamikazes came in. And I think they lost four or five hundred men on that thing. Yeah. And they just went, they came right through the deck. I mean, oh. when they, they hit that thing and went right down into the bowels of the ship and everything started burning and exploding. Yeah. Unbelievable. <clears throat> well, we owe one heck of a debt of gratitude for every fellow and lady that served in World War II. They are and should be our heroes. But, you know, one of the things that gets overlooked also is the two flight crews. One on the Enola Gay yep. that dropped uh, Fat Man, the first, first, and the, and the other one and that dropped Little Boy, yep. uh, and that was uh, Major General uh, Sweeney. Yeah, Tippett's was the first one. Paul Tippett. He was That's the exactly uh, right. The, first one. the courage of those guys, because we had no yeah. idea what was going to happen when that thing exploded. They didn't know if they were going to get blown out of the air with exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. So they went right ahead and did their duty. Tip our caps to them. Yep. Yep. In fact, some physicists in those days said, you may set the atmosphere of the world on fire. Oh, I know. I know yeah. that, that's how far they went with this. Yeah, that was penny penny, the sky yeah. was oh, falling, yeah. you know. But <clears throat> I mean, we opened up a <clears throat> can of worms. But I got to tell you, folks, it was the right thing to do. Yep. Yeah. You know another guy that gets very little credit in the big scheme of things? Henry Stimson. Yep, exactly. Uh, he convinced Truman. Mm -hmm. By the way, when President Roosevelt died, uh, I don't know if you folks are aware of this or not, but Stimson had to go sit down with Harry Truman and explain to him of the Manhattan Project. Yep, it, that was... Truman was kept entirely in the dark. Yep, that was one of the best kept secrets yeah. that we've ever developed. You talk about the vice president and the president being joined by the hip. Yeah. It, what was so phenomenal about it, this thing was complex. It yep. took for years, that Manhattan Project. Absolutely. It was developed all all different parts of the country. Yep. But nobody ever knew what the other part was doing or what what's this little gizmo we're working on? I don't know. And somebody else is working yep. on something else. But they never were able to put the parts together. There was an awful lot of left hands and right hands oh, yeah. who didn't know what the, uh, the other guy was mm -hmm. doing. Right. Uh, it was a tremendous project. It was. It would be hard to pull off today. Yep. Oh, God, yeah. They, they, some of the people uh, in government, especially government, but also in the, just can't wait to leak stuff. Oh, my God. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, trying these people for uh, revealing our secrets sure. and, in <clears throat> some cases, extreme punishment. Oh, we got uh, a couple of characters we'd like to get back in this country. I would. Yes. Just to prosecute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a firing squad oiling up their weapons. We're getting ready. Um, well, <clears throat> back to reality. Okay. <laughs> I have uh, three very interesting poll numbers. Mm -hmm. I need you to uh, explain these to me. Oh, boy. 
I'm sure you're asking the right guy. This Quinnipiac poll is a well thought of poll. Yes. Well right. quoted. <clears throat> Hillary Clinton is not honest and trustworthy. 57% of the people agree with that. I'm surprised it's not more. Hillary <clears throat> does not care about their needs and problems. 52% yep, yep. agree with that. You know, this is obviously very true because she will not engage the middle class in unscripted no. free-for-alls. Uh, she only talks to well-vetted Democrats who are asking pre-approved questions, questions that's right. and she's rehearsed the answers. Yep. So does she really care about listening to their needs no. or hearing their problems? Not at all. Hell no. And if someone is like that, how can you trust someone like that? Well, you can't. Not a, just that, but look at all her actions in general. Oh, yeah. Look at look at look at her record. You know everything from emails to uh, to deceptive and this yeah. and that. I mean, it started out. It started out when they were he and she were in the White House. Oh yeah. Oh, listen, we uh, uh, you know we could go uh, by the numbers Jeez. on uh, some of the things that she's done. Well, guess what? In a poll of white female voters. Hillary Clinton in June had a 44% approval rating. That to me is surprisingly low. That should be her base. It's got to be her base. Yeah. However, the July numbers certainly didn't have her singing and dancing in the streets. What happened in July? Dropped to 34% mm -hmm. approval rating mm -hmm. among white female voters. Now, with it, what we're seeing now as a result of this is they have hustled out these warm and fuzzy ads now. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's kissing babies and uh, my mother uh, and, and uh, then I was blah, blah, blah. And this is supposed to put a very positive and warm and fuzzy spin on her. The handlers said, her handler said, you know, you're coming off, your image is hard and cold and you have to change it. And, and they're doing this polling, uh, they, her people are doing this polling yep. on a daily basis. I mean, they have these numbers constantly. Yep. Um, and one more thing from my friends at Quinnipiac. Now, <clears throat> I want you to <laughs> explain this one to me. Joe Biden, 58% of the people polled said he is trustworthy. Right. 57% <clears throat> say he cares about them. 49% give him a favorable rating. Now, here we have the Democrats, front runner, yep. polling numbers exactly opposite of Brother Biden. He, not the media, darling. Hillary is the media darling, and the media does not, I, I can't say that he's not intelligent, I'm sure he's very intelligent, he makes mistakes, he puts his foot in his mouth. He talks like you and I talk. Yeah. Well, we we, we well, put better put in the mouth yeah. all the time. I mean, but, yeah, I mean, uh, you just have to watch this program for a little yeah, while yeah. and you can figure that out. But I mean, Biden would fit on this program. Oh yeah. Right here, and... Uh, we can sit here and we can have a heck of a time. But he's not the media darling. That's right. He's not. But he's a regular guy. Yes, he is. If you know, if you said, hey, what do you say we get down to the local watering hole and watch the football game and have a few beers? Biden is the guy you'd want to go That's with. That's right. Absolutely. Can you imagine Hillary doing that? No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> can you imagine Hillary sitting here? No. No. That's the correct answer. Ah. <sighs> Before I uh, throw a tantrum, would you like to uh, perhaps lob a bomb of two, or two of your own? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this past week, the Boston Magazine and the Boston Globe, they published an article that I have never thought they were going to publish. I would say when hell freezes over, they'll publish something like this. Well, they must be strapping on the skates. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the, basically, the article is about the head of the Worcester Public Housing. And he has given the, some of the residents there the ultimatum. Get a job, go to school, or get out. Can you imagine that? That's mighty harsh words. <laughs> In this day and age. Yeah. And now, now better yet, uh, there's a pro program called uh, um, ABL, I believe it is, yeah. And the uh, Governor Baker, as in his administration, said that they will they will sign on to that for the whole state. If you're in public housing, one person, at least one person in that apartment, has to have a job, or be going to school full time. Yeah, um, able-bodied, of course. It, it, We're not talking somebody that's you, you disabled. You know uh, what kind of gets my goat a little bit, uh, a lot. Uh, listen, people get down on their luck. Uh, th there's just no two ways about it. And if we have low-cost housing available for people. They qualify. God bless them. Move yep. in. Okay? But these uh, ladies, they're on welfare. Yep. And they got an able-bodied layabout boyfriend living with living them. Living with them. Yep. Yeah. I mean, now that is not right. Now, this, this guy... This, uh, I, 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 I don't get, well, his name is Mar Mariano. He came from the projects, public housing himself, when he was a kid. He was wanted to, so bad to get out of that. Yeah. He went to he did, and he got himself out, he pulled himself up, and got out of it. What he is, to, one of his big things here, looking at the Worcester housing, there are three and four generations of the same family in that. Not that, uncommon. And they, that three generations, that's not that's your father, your parents, your grandparents, and your great grandparents, all living in that same subsidized welfare housing. And if you were to sit down with those people and talk to them on a rational basis, they would say, it's our right to be here. Here. He sent out letters. There are 1,500 families waiting for federal subsidized housing in the Worcester area. Those on the list, he sent letters. They sent letters to 559 that would be eligible for this program. They don't have any disability or anything else, saying that if they would sign up for this, one to get a job or go to school, they'd be moved up to the head of the list. Seven percent took his offer. Wow. Seven percent. The other 93 percent said, "No, I've been waiting a long time. I'll just wait it out." He says here, one strapping young man interviewed from the local TV said, what, you want me to go to work? That's just rude. So, this is the attitude. Unbelievable. You just, you can't make stuff like that up. No, he was so rude to say that you're going to have to get a job or you get out of this place. We're going to have to clean up our act, yeah, I guess. I know. Because we, we're rude. We're just rude. Um, Especially you. I know I am. <laughs> 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 but he said in the past, uh, any time they did something like this, the politicians would back off because they'd start getting... Well, that, no, that, of course, that brings up another subject, uh, and um, that's the old, uh, there is no such thing as a free lunch. That's right. But you discovered a free lunch, didn't you? Yes, I did. Tell us about that. You're referring to... No, I'm referring to oh, your advertisement. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. We li Good segue. I just, I just didn't pick up on it. This has been running in the globe. I'm not going to tell you who it is or anything like that. That's their business. But when you see free to the public and all the way around the edge of the thing says free, 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 all the way. And then you start reading it's It's free jewelry. This liquidator has got a million pieces of jewelry valued at $100 million. They want to give it to you. Sounds good, right? Sounds great. I'm going to sign up for it after the show. It, you'll get it in lots of 10. So you do the math here. They got a hundred or a million pieces and a hundred million dollars. It's simple enough. You know, a third grader could say, well, better worth a hundred dollars a piece on the average. That's so All you got to do is send them $24.99 cash or a money order. Of course, it's for shipping and handling. And they'll yeah. send you a package of 10 free pieces of jewelry. Do the math. That's a hundred dollars a piece. That's a thousand. And I'm sure they'll send it in a padded envelope. Oh, It'll absolutely. It'll cost about a dollar and twenty cents to mail. You send them the twenty-five bucks. You're going to get ten pieces of junk. Believe it or not. 
I well, this shot. just crashes my whole idea of having fun. I Why guess not? I'm yeah. not going to do this. I had the money order ready to go. Woof! Holy cow. Folks, we thought we found the free lunch, and apparently not. Yeah, that killed us again. Man alive. Um, I have to throw a little bit of a hissy fit here. Okay. You don't mind. Uh, I'd be surprised if you didn't. Yeah. Republicans are morons. Grover Norquist is the chief suspect here. He has this organization that um, solicits politicians into making a um, statement that they will not raise taxes if they're elected, nor will they support any new taxes unless they are offset by social spending. He preaches this, uh, and he actually, ex and he expects all Republicans to take this pledge if they expect he and his group to support them. So, we will be known as the party who will repair highways and bridges and we'll take the funds from nutrition for children programs, food stamp programs, Head Start educational programs. Good thinking, Republicans. You couldn't have looked stupider or more selfish if you tried. Absolutely brain dead if you follow this man. Yeah, it, it just didn't make any sense. It doesn't. Why don't you take a gun and shoot yourself in the foot? Yeah, yeah. Because that's what now, you're doing anyway. Listen, there are times Guess what, boys and girls? We've got to raise taxes because we've got problems. And we can't take food out of the mouths of kids. Or oh, the school lunch program. There's kids getting free lunches because they, uh, their folks have such a low income. Well, we'll stop that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, That's this craziness. Is dumb. Really dumb. Um, here in this state, I would support a raise in the state gas tax. Oh, I would too. Yeah. Fix, fix the damn roads. Fix the damn roads is right. And now is the time to go with a graduated yep. income tax. Mm -hmm. um, look, people making over $500,000 a year or a million dollars a year, they could kick in an extra 3 4 or 5%. Yep. Um, and we've got problems in this state with our infrastructure, and we got to do something about it. Our infrastructure is in bad shape. Yeah. You know uh, what's really interesting? Uh, if any of you folks at home don't really believe this, tune in to WBZ in the mornings, rush hour, in the afternoons, rush hour, and listen to, oh, the delay's on 128. It's taken an hour to go the nine miles yep. from Newton <clears throat> to Braintree. Uh, the Southeast Expressway is jammed. They're not moving. You can't get across the second bridge. Blah, 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 blah. And by the way, this is the city that wanted to host the Olympics. That's right. And they can't even control drive time, let alone uh, all of the traffic and all of the influx of people that would have come uh, for that madness. We've got to do something about this. We can't just sit on our hands and say, no new taxes. Uh, I support a gas tax. Yeah, it's not just the it's not just the traffic. How many times did you have your teeth jolted this winter, or even now, with potholes? Oh, your this, favorite subject. Like, it's like a third world country out there. By the way, I'm getting off my we, we, soapbox here for you, a second. You could go to people who say, well, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, they got a lot better roads than we got. Yeah, oh, and you know what the answer to that is? Well, they don't have snow down there. They don't plow their streets. They, they don't have frost heaves they and all of them. that. What a bunch of crap that is. Um, but let's talk for a minute about your favorite subject, the Longfellow Bridge. Oh, my God. They put an extension on yes. it. Yes! <laughs> I thought about that when I read that. I said, oh, Dwayne is going to love this. Just, just a, a brief. They're, they're redoing the Longfellow Bridge. They can't just do the bridge. They want to do it, restore it as the way it was 150 years ago or whatever it was. Now you got into things where the bridge was riveted. They don't rivet anymore. 
they didn't know it. Nobody knew how to do it. So they had to go out and train some craftsmen, had to train some other people to rivet. You know, that's putting one little hot bolt in them, jam it in here, one at a time, the whole thing. They had to have certain surfaces, some kind of granite they had to. Why? Who cares? Do you get think that damn bridge built? And if you want it look like it did, make it look like it did. Make little dents like they look yeah. like rivets. Who knows that they're real rivets? You know, do you think one person Driving out of 25,000 that, that goes across that bridge cares about how it was constructed? They care about one thing. It's, not it's safe fall down. and we have access now to get across yeah. to the other That's side right. over to Cambridge. But some yeah. of these Looney Tunes got this idea that it's, it's, it's nuts. You know, I, I'm really going to just throw the program into absolute chaos here uh, by jumping to a subject I didn't think we'd even talk about. But by gosh, by golly, well, maybe I won't. Maybe I can't find it. But, uh, well, all right, I'll find it. Um, there's an antique house uh, circa... 1870 or so. I think it may be in Newton. A guy has bought it. <laughs> he wants to tear it down because it's sitting on like about six acres and he wants to put two okay. mansions yep. up. Well, the townspeople are in an uproar. That's an important house. Joe Gobbledygook lived there. And the architect that did that once designed another house. And we don't want it ripped down. Well, if it was so important, why didn't you buy it? Well, that's the problem. They don't want to appropriate the money. They asked the guy, the owner, <laughs> if they could give him $100,000. And in return, he would guarantee that he would not rip the house down for the next, his lifetime or something like that. We can't save every single bloody right. structure we have when it doesn't make sense. Yep. And this doesn't, I mean, should we start saving outhouses? That's what well, it, it, this is how it used to it might be. Might be a hundred year old house. But yeah. It's an antique, but still an outhouse. A lot of memories yeah. in that old That's outhouse. Right. We don't want to destroy that. But you can't do that, folks. When someone buys a piece of property and pays oh, millions a million, two million dollars for it, and says, well, I'm going to subdivide it, bingo, I'm going to tear the house down and I'm going to build up two big houses. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, that's a pretty good idea because those two houses are going to generate a heck of a lot of taxes. As long as he's not violating some zoning regulations, yeah. it's his property. And as it's long as property. he's not putting up something that yep. looks like a, a, an attraction at Disney World or something or, or some garish thing with blinking lights, his property. You do as he damn well pleases. Ah, when I find that article in this pile, I'll yell about it some more. Um, but with gas dropping the way it is precipitously, mm -hmm. this is the ideal time to put a nickel or seven That's cents right. on the gas we'll notice tax. It. No one will notice it. And that way, we have a much better form of taxation mm -hmm. because the people that are using the road are will paying. be paying yep. for it. That's right. The trucks going over the road will be paying for it. The ones that get six miles to the gallon, the big diesel uh, tractors tr pulling trailers, will be paying much more than everybody else because they refuel more often. And rightfully so, they do more damage to the roads. Yes. Why should uh, some lady who's retired, a widow, who perhaps goes food shopping on Thursdays and goes to church on Sundays, not get some relief. She's not using the roads. Well, she should get relief. Yeah, that's, that, that's it. <clears throat> uh, so I'm not a big fan of let's raise taxes like, you know, like willy-nilly. But cheapest creepers, when it makes sense, 
Mm -hmm. And it's something we got to do, and we're going to get a return on it. That's right. I mean, holy cow. But we I, just can't block everything. We had some company, and she was from um, Pennsylvania. To right, there's a section of Pennsylvania that's it's in Appalachia. And she drove up here, and she says, oh, my God. She says, I thought it's going to wreck my car, the potholes. She says, everything is all broken up, and everything's patched and repatched. And she must be Route 80. Yeah, she came across that. Came down 495, <laughs> and then on a local road. She says, I'm afraid to drive on these things. Well, you watch people, even today, you go down 1A, they're going like this. Somebody else thinks they're a drunk driver. They're just dodging potholes yeah. yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's some on 1A that'll take the front end out of your car off. Y you know, um, it, when um, I was uh, on the road all the time, I would never drive on 80. And the Pennsylvania Turnpike, 76, that was no bargain. No, either. that wasn't a good one. You'd run 90. Yep. Um, Oh, wait a minute now. No, you run 80. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You did 76 of us, the horror show. Um, because uh, 90 is, goes over the top, goes up through New York mm -hmm. and down. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, 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 that Pennsylvania Turnpike, mother of all creatures, large and small, what a horror show that was. Well, anyway. Um, so... You know, for decades, well, um, they uh, graduated income tax. Well, we've got uh, statutes that prohibit a graduated state income tax. Well, you know, we must look at what we did in the past. We, our uh, country clubs, the ultra white, all white um, uh, country clubs just for the rich. Um, excluded uh, certain people, people of color, uh, Jewish people. Jewish people. Yep. Uh, but <clears throat> finally of late the barriers broke down uh, and we now have uh, people of color, Jewish people joining the country clubs. The world hasn't fallen into total chaos so a change of the tax code should not be followed by pestilence, earthquakes, no. and unquenchable fires here in the Bay State, the hub of civilization. That's right. Simply because we did something in the past doesn't mean we can't amend it and say, all right, we need to change that statute. Some of these problems are so easily attainable financially with so little suffering on the people because it's, it's so much, so many given so little. Yeah, but it adds up. Absolutely. Even they, they keep saying about the Social Security and Medicare draining out. Well, first of all, stop robbing the damn the the uh, fund. You're not to rob Social Security for this and Medicare for that. Leave it for what it was. Mm -hmm. they, they they dip their hands into it all the Listen, time. Listen, they they took the um, the lockbox yeah. where the Social Security funds were and they dumped it into the general fund. That's right. Yeah, that was wrong. Social Security. I don't, I don't care if you make it means to test it or not, but I don't know what the, the lim limit is today. Oh, uh, about a quarter, I think, maybe. After that, you don't pay it? Yeah. Well, that's the people that could, could easily pay it. Well, here's the thing. Okay, FICA, um, Medicare and Medicaid, yep. there's no upward limits. Yep. You pay that if you make $30 million, $60 right. million, $90 million, you're still paying into that. Yep. You could do the same thing with Social Security. Absolutely. And that would cure a big percentage of the mm -hmm. problem. Absolutely. But they don't have the guts to yep. do it. They don't. No. And you know, I get a kick out of the Democrats and the Republicans alike. A pox on both their houses. They will not talk about Social Security. The, the Senate, third, they call it the, the third rail. That's right. Yeah. And the reason is. They're afraid to say, we need to do something. If it's the Republicans that say it, then they're afraid the Democrats are going to say, see, see, they want to wreck Social Security. And the Democrats won't touch it because this was Franklin Roosevelt's dream. We fought long and hard for this. We're not going to start tearing it apart with madness from the Republican parties. So each party 
has their own boogeyman that That's is right. set to jump on the other party. So as a result, they act like the craven cowards they are. And they won't speak about it. They won't address it. They won't do a damn thing about it. Boot them all out, I say. Yep. Oh, yeah. Term yeah. limits. Yeah, that, that should have been instituted a long time ago. Absolutely. Uh, well, I got one more thing to rant and rave about. Okay, go ahead. Then I'm going to let you rant and rave. I'm going to address the world's biggest and stupidest ripoff. Are you ready for this, sir? I am ready. Diamond engagement rings. <laughs> oh, my God. Surely, she says to him as she bats her eyes, surely I'm worth two months' two salary, months salary, aren't I, honey pie? Give me a break. Well, yeah. first of all, who sets this arbitrary two-month salary thing? De Beers, Beers does, yeah, that's they right. They control the, yeah. the diamond market. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But the thing God is, almighty. the media picks this up, and they make it almost that you have to do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you don't, don't you love me, Waldo? Some of these young couples that are getting married today, believe it or not, I think they still do get married and still just living together. So yeah, well, there's a few of them. Old-fashioned types. They should not be spending two months' salary on that ring any more than they should go out and buy a Mercedes. That's exactly right. That should be a fund that they yep. set aside to buy a house. Yeah, or a uh, rainy day. or Yes, yeah, exactly. Or but to spend <clears throat> $10,000, nuts for a bauble that is undetectable. With an imitation diamond yeah, uh, that you can buy in a platinum setting for five hundred bucks. Yeah, cubic zirconia. You can yes, get beautiful cubics. Yeah. You need a twenty. I had a jeweler tell me mm -hmm. you need a twenty power ring to tell the difference. In a lot of experience, yes. I sold to the jewelry industry. And I, oh, um, you old rascal! I'm they, preaching uh, to you. They use a cubic to judge the quality of a diamond because they can make a cubic perfect in the lab. But you can't make a diamond, so right. the color and clarity, they use a cubic to compare it to the diamond to set the grade for the diamond. Yeah. And there are there are cubics out there that I don't care how good you are. You well, can't tell the difference. I had a friend of mine, uh, a good friend, and his wife was a jewelry dealer. And he told me, he said, Bill, he said, I have had experts in the field tell, tell me they cannot tell the difference. But yet, some poor sap. It goes out and spend fourteen thousand dollars because little Mary Lou says, "Don't you love me?" We had yeah. a uh, we had a diamond analyzer that we came out with, and they took it down to the diamond district in New York City because, and they told them that you guys are there's a cubics coming that you're gonna, not going to be able to tell the difference. A customer's mm -hmm. going to come in here and you're going to buy that. You you're going to get you're going to get fooled. Every one of them said, "No, not me, not me." So they took this. This, it was an electronic device, and they, it worked on resistance, current resistance through the through the stone. And they had a cubic in diamonds, 70, 80 percent. Wow. Picked the cubic as the real diamond. Wow. 80 percent. Well, that that's what George mm -hmm. told me. You know, uh, by gosh. Um, so, boys, listen to me. When a uh, little cutie pie says, I want <laughs> little cutie pie. Yeah, a diamond. I want, certainly I'm worth two months salary, aren't I? You look her right square in the eye and you say, well, Cream Puff, listen to this. Certainly I'm worth six months salary. So I'll tell you what, cough it up and then I'll get you a ring. So there. Oh, by the way, by the way, you know what else I heard too, and, and I think I'm pretty sure it was George that told me this, that women getting engaged, and when the poor sap slides that huge rock on her finger, oh Waldo, I love you. The next day she runs to a jeweler to have it checked, to have it evaluated, or yeah. appraised, yeah. And God help him if mm -hmm. it's an imitation. Oh, you God. don't love me. You're Pulling the wool over my eye. Ah. 
How big a ring did, ring did your wife get? Uh, third, uh, oh, gosh. <clears throat> Don't listen to this, honey. <laughs> <laughs> get him in trouble. <laughs> third of a car. Third, I think mine got a quarter. Yeah, and it was uh, uh, flawed. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the army. I didn't yeah. have any money. No, I mean, what the hell is that? I was we picked it out together. None of yeah. this. We, that's exactly yeah. what we did. Which one do you like there? Yeah. You want the $50 one or the $40 one? <laughs> well, not only that, <laughs> but we went down to Leach Me a Sales in Dedham. Oh, I used to, we used to go there yeah. too, yeah. And um, uh, I uh, said, uh, well, uh, show us your diamonds and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, and she's dying of mortification. I said, well, you can do better than that on price, can't you? Mm -hmm. I got them down to, uh, from 250 down to 200 Because uh, I said to him, I said, every once in a while, you guys run a 20% or 25% sale mm -hmm. on diamonds. Uh, you know, uh, go see the manager and see if we can't get that sale tonight. Because I'll buy this. They weren't losing any money. No. The profit margin on things like diamonds and, and better jewelry is obscene. Yep. Oh, it is. It is hundred percent markup. More, more than that. Much yeah. more. They can they can sell that thing for half whatever they got, and they still going to double their money. Yeah. All right, let's change gears for just a second and throw out this because I want your opinion on this. This is a hot one. Council debates police body cams, cameras in Boston. Mm -hmm. Uh your favorite commissioner and mine, Billy Evans, is opening is open to participating in a pilot program, but said he has qualms about the cameras. Um, I uh, a fellow. Uh, I'm just going to run this through quickly here. I think it's uh, Tito Jackson, uh, who is a Boston yeah, City yeah. Councilor. Uh, as an African-American whose grandfather participated in the Civil Rights Movement, I've heard, let's take it slow for a long time. It's not the solution, he said, but it's a solution. I don't disagree with Tito I don't disagree at with all. That, that statement. Uh, and then, among the country's 25 largest cities, Boston is one of the four that is yet to um, implement or even try out body cameras. Carol Rose, executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union, oh boy. pointed out. The other cities are just a, a, a strange mix. Uh, Boston, Jacksonville, Florida, Columbus, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee. People in major, uh, police in major cities, New York, Chicago, Detroit, Washington, use them or have particular uh, participated in a pilot program. And Carol Rose from ACLU says, that's shameful. We deserve better. Body-worn cameras have shown to build trust. And uh, just one more quote, and then I'm going to ask you to explain it all to me. The use of body cameras, this was Brianna Codwell, a 21-year-old junior at Bowdoin College, said the cameras would go a long way to restoring the public's trust in police. The use of body cameras offers society, especially communities of color, a pathway to restore public trust in a law enforcement culture that is unfortunately too quick to defend misconduct slow to identify and remove bad cops, and unwilling to recognize and address the impact of race in community policing. Body cameras will offer us access to the truth. What's your feeling about body cameras, Dwayne? Mixed. Yeah, I think I, that that's, I, you know, this is not Excuse the pun, not a black and white issue. No. But uh, there's a lot of gray here. The uh, advocates, a lot of those that you mentioned, are advocating, watch the police. They're doing something wrong. The body camera should be used both ways to protect the officer. 
some of these, these accusations that are coming out now are just getting to be ludicrous. Uh, a policeman can't do his job. He don't dare do anything. Right. Because of the, reper the repercussions. Um, a, I know a young man that was a uh, detective in Boston. He's now inside. He got a job. He says, I can't, I'm not staying out there and jeopardize my, my career, my family, and my everything I got. He says, I might make a mistake one day. And he says, you're not allowed a mistake anymore as a policeman. <clears throat> yeah. So he, <clears throat> Let, let me ask you a difficult question. The use of body cameras offers society, especially communities of color, a pathway to restore public trust in a law enforcement culture that is unfortunately too quick to defend misconduct, slow to identify and remove bad cops, and unwilling to recognize and address the impact of race in community policing. To me, she nails it right mm -hmm. there. Every word that she said is true. Yes, it is. The police have brought this on themselves. Yep. I hate to say that the big blue line because uh, I am 100% mm -hmm. yep. in back oh, yeah. of the right. police. But they have by allowing bad cops to remain in place and by covering up incidents. That's, that's the, the thing that really bothers yeah. people. I'm not sure cameras are going to solve that. No. But if the police then say, I better watch my step. I better do it by the numbers, mm -hmm. by right, because I'm wearing this stupid thing. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Then I think that... Uh, um, we've done a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but th this, what happens if the police uh, stop a car okay. for speeding, walking up, wearing the camera, and it shows um, drugs sitting on the front seat? Now, good point. Is this an invasion of privacy, as the Brits would say? Because I didn't stop these guys on a drug stop. I don't have a search warrant, but there is a brown paper bag sitting there, and I think there's drugs in it. With no cameras, you're going to say, What's in that bag? You got anything in this car that, you that should I have? should know about? Yeah. And if he says no, I'm clean as a whistle. Fine, hand me that bag. Well, I don't think you're going to get away with that with the camera. No. But by the same token, if the drugs are in the open or a gun is in the open. Mm -hmm. If it's visible. Yeah. Then that camera is being used by the police officer who stopped them for speeding and do they have a right to privacy? Is that camera invasive? Um, That's a good question. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, I, you I'm, can bet it's going to be challenged. Oh yeah, as a oh, I think so too, yeah. Um, I wonder, I mean, the, the um, privilege or the right to privacy has had enormous impact on this country because it was the um, reason that abortion was allowed, mm -hmm. the right of privacy. So that's had a tremendous impact on this country. Uh, so that must be a very strong statute, the right to privacy. I wonder how all of this would work out. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the use of the camera is going to be very interesting. You yeah. um, You see a lot of these, if you watch, uh, there's a series, I think, on True TV or Spike. There's a series called Cop. Cop's been around for years. Yes, it has. And uh, there's one called Jail. And there's one, someone, MSNBC's got one about prisons on, on the weekend. And uh, if you notice in the jail and the prison ones, Whenever they do something, they have to extradite a prisoner out of the, pull him out of a cell. 
and he's got four or five got big guys going and get him. There's somebody always taping it. They yeah. always got a camera because then the, the inmate can't say, well, you beat me to a pulp in there. Yeah, yeah. Dragged me out mm -hmm. and beat my head in or yeah. something. Um, but, uh, you know, there was another, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not even going to scratch the surface here of all this stuff. Uh, but um, this one right here. Police kill Tennessee man armed with gun and hatchet at theater when he unleashed a volley of pepper spray at the audience. Uh, he was shot done dead by a SWAT team as he tried to escape out the back door. Well, guess what? The gun was a pellet gun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this, um, as far as I'm concerned, he got exactly what he deserved. That's right. Uh, he was shot and killed. He brandished a weapon. All right, so the, the comp in a semi-dark yeah. theater has to make an instantaneous decision. Oh, can you hold that thing up a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it might be a pellet gun. I better not shoot. I have, I have a, I think it's a Crossman 177 yeah. caliber pellet yeah. gun. Yeah. Take a 177 to point two two. That you, you'd have to get a micrometer out to see the difference. Well, so at the end exactly. of the barrel looks exactly like a twenty. Exactly right. And when it comes up like that, what? you mean to say, oh, wait a minute, uh, hang on. No, that's uh... Uh, No. The cop, has, when faced with deadly force, mm -hmm. he's got to match it. He's got to uh, defend himself. That's right. And the people in the audience. And, and the, the people, people in the that, audience. That, uh, that's theater. right. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, anybody that brandishes one of those yep. air pistols, it, whatever he gets, he deserves. You point at that cop, you, yeah. you're on uh, your own. Oh, that's, by the way, uh, they're finding out more about this guy. I guess he was just another nutbag. They usually are. Yep. Yep. Well, who in their right mind would do something, do something like, like that? that? I mean, good Lord. Did you see this thing uh, in the paper that 11-year-old shot the 3-year-old? Yeah, I get that. That's in here too. That, that's um, and uh, there also there's a 13 year old in here. Oh, you know what? As we dwindle down in time here, um, Dedham. This driver from Sharon. I think he's from Sharon. Uh. Ran down a young girl, college oh, student, yeah, 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 yeah. jogging, yep. killed her. Yep. Now, he apologized at his trial. Um, he hit her and threw her more than 85 feet. He's from Sharon. His yep. name is Jeffrey Bickoff. Um, he had 20 driving related violations on his record, including 10 speeding tickets and 10 car crashes for which he was found at fault. 45 years old, and when this happened, his license was suspended. He was driving. Don't care. Uh, Those kind of that's characters That's exactly care. right. But listen to this, how hot felt. How, how good the family must have felt when they heard this. I never meant to hurt anyone. Well, of course he never meant to hurt anybody. Please try to accept my apology and know it is sincere because I cannot offer any more than that. Very articulate and heartfelt, I'm sure. But what really gets my goat is the uh, family said, uh, knowing Bickoff was driving with a suspended license made the incident unforgivable because the defendant knowingly broke the law. Yep. The, that fact makes this a crash and not an accident. The Norfolk District Attorney asked for the max of seven years in jail for taking this lovely 20-year-old girl's life. Mm -hmm. Guess what he got? 
Two and a half years the judge gave him. Two and a half bloody years. It's a tragic joke. And get a load of this, though. They're not babying this guy. Oh, no, I'm sure not. He will lose his license for 15 years. <laughs> he didn't have one to start with. And he's also going to get three years probation for the conviction of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon charge. His character will get out. First thing you do is start driving again. Listen, he'll get out in 18 months yep. because he'll mind his P's and Q's yep. in there and uh, he'll walk. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And this little girl's family, mm -hmm. and it shows her father, mother, and sister in this picture, yeah, he will, no, deal, no respect for the law. will deal with their loss absolutely. of their daughter or sister for the rest of their lives. And this jackass will be out driving again before you know it. There's a mindset with those people that they don't care. They, I'll do what I want. Yep. It's always been that. It's going to be that way. Mayor Menino is going to take the driver's license away from the gangbangers. Yeah. Then he found out that <laughs> they laughed. We don't have driver's license. We don't need them. We don't use them. You know, um, there's a bunch of stuff here we've got to get to, but we're just not going to get to it. Uh, more bloody stuff here. But uh, the state, state senator got to uh, called for armed guards guarding the state house. Do you realize that the guys that uh, are behind the metal detectors are um, members of um, the uh, park rangers and they are not armed? That's kind of absurd. Isn't that ridiculous? That's kind of absurd. Yeah, and the his guy that makes some common sense here and says, we need to arm these people mm -hmm. before we get a nut in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, we just got the high sign that this hour flew by, and we just didn't like they really usually get, do. We didn't really get to rave about stuff. No. Nope. So we we're accumulating more and more unused yeah, stuff. More and more unused stuff. We're going to have to do a special show on yeah, unused we'll stuff. Yeah, nostalgia or something. Yeah, something. Our, our, our information does get stale. It does, and you know, sometimes out. we toss it out. But jeepers, creepers, there's so much to get to. Uh, so I promise you, this will put together another program real soon and I'm not going to add anything to this pile. No, I'm just going to deal with it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. All right. Very good. Hey, listen, folks, have a great um, summer. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> day, day. Beautiful days. And uh, think good thoughts. And send us money in plain brown paper bags, yeah, if you don't, will. We don't care. It doesn't have to be new money. It can be yeah, old money. Wrinkled. Yeah. Well, we'll take it to Foxwood and see what we can do. There you go. Good night. Take care. Bye.